Dorothy Provine had quite an interesting career, but what was more shocking about her was the fact that she refused to marry Frank Sinatra because he was already a divorced man, which went against her religious beliefs. But she surprised the whole world when she committed adultery with a married man, fell pregnant, and divorced him from his wife so she could marry him herself. Continue watching to find out more about this interesting actress. Dorothy started her career by appearing in amateur musicals. Provine was born 1935 in Deadwood, South Dakota, but was brought up in Seattle, where her parents ran a nightclub. She graduated from the University of Washington with a degree in theater arts in 1957. After only a few appearances in amateur productions of musicals, she was spotted by a Hollywood talent scout and given the lead in the Bonnie Parker story. This Hollywood talent was Scotty Baiano, a Warner Brothers talent executive. Despite her good notices, Provine was offered only two B-movies in 1950. Riot in Juvenile Prison and The 30-Foot Bride of Candy Rock. Juvenile Prison was the most successful, where the 24-year-old Provine played a juvenile delinquent, one of a number of young women introduced into a male prison that had been co-ed by a liberal governor. She refused to marry Frank Sinatra. At the same time, Provine was a regular on TV, gaining her first series The Alaskans, set during the Yukon Gold Rush of the 1890s in which she played a saloon owner and singer called Rocky Shaw, who has attracted adventurer Roger Moore. The on-screen romance reflected the fact that Moore had fallen for Provine in real life, which almost caused a rift between him and his wife, Dorothy Squires. Frank Sinatra then dated her for a while, but there was no question of marriage, as the Catholic Provine would not not wed an already twice divorced man. Dorothy Provine still became miserable when Frank Sinatra announced his engagement to Juliet Prowse, but the actress held her chin high and came out with colors flying on the surface. During that time, she even got an unexpected nice valentine from her Warner Brothers bosses. Provine also confirmed that she dated Andy Williams, Ray Strickland, and Alan Ladd Jr. during this period. Provine reached stardom in the 60s. The actress then started gaining a lot of recognition in the title role of the Bonnie Parker story released in 1958. The film was considered a gritty, unglamorized, low-budget depiction of the two-person crime wave during the Depression. Provine's feisty portrayal of the gun-toting criminal who linked up with Clyde Barrow seemed to promise a film career with her more buxom blonde colleagues, Mamie Van Doren and Jane Mansfield, the sort that gentlemen preferred in the late 1950s. Most memorable was her vibrant performance as Pinky Pinkham, the Charleston dancing flapper in the TV series The Roaring Twenties. Provine was in all 45 episodes of the series, which was set in Chicago and revolved around the speakeasy, where Pinky performed to an audience that inevitably consisted of racketeers. In The Roaring Twenties, she delightfully sang at least one vintage number in each episode, and she also had a top 20 hit in the UK, such as the song Don't Bring Lulu in 1961. After she finished her work in the TV series, Dorothy had an ulcerated right eye, but thankfully it improved and she was able to attend the Washington Press Correspondence Dinner, at which she sang for President Kennedy. In 1962, Provine then moved into a Regency-style hillside Hollywood house, which was the second house she owned since becoming a star. The actress also battled her Warner Brothers bosses because she absolutely refused to make The Perils of Pauline, the new series they wanted her to begin in 1963. Dorothy didn't want to do anything else but appear in the movies. The following year, she had enough and bought herself out of her Warner Brothers contract. Provine was soon cast as the cool wife of Milton Burley in Stanley Kramer's homage to slapstick comedy titled It's a Mad Mad World, released in 1963, in which she is the only one of the avaricious group hunting the $350,000 of stolen cash who wants no part of the fought over money. However, she was terrified of facing six weeks of 105 to 115 degree summer heat in Palm Springs while shooting the film. Her ghostly complexion came from a near fatal attack of sun poisoning when she was just a girl. During the same period, Dorothy was hospitalized with a burst blood vessel in one of her legs, which was the result of too strenuous rehearsing for a nightclub act. Provine loved acting in comedy movies. Provine, for all her physical attributes and several charming roles, could not conceal her girl-next-door persona, which gradually re-emerged in the mid-60s. 
The actress then played what could be called a good sport in half a dozen comedy films. These included the tame but entertaining movie Good Neighbor Sam, in which she co-starred with Jack Lemmon as his suburban wife, That Darn Cat, a Walt Disney movie in which she and the clean-cut Dean Jones were upstaged by the feline of the title, Kiss the Girls and Make Them Die, which was a contrived James Bond pastiche with Provine as an English spy, Who's Minding the Mint as the girlfriend of Jim Hutton's U.S. Mint employee and the riskily titled Never a Dull Moment, opposite Dick Van Dyke. In between, she made a terrific cameo appearance in The Great Race. In April 1965, the press revealed that Provine left the production of Harlow because she didn't feel the part suited her. But director John Sargent, watching Carol Lindley's deathbed scene, confirms that the scene cost him $25,000. He signed Provine, but he just couldn't see her dying. Just months after this, the actress performs in the four-day Hollywood gala premiere of The Great Race. Reportedly, this was the largest press junket in Hollywood history. It started with a dinner party at the Beverly Hilton Hotel and has its climax with a dinner at one of Warner's biggest sound stages, catered by Phil Silvers. Soon after that, Provine then heads off to promote The Great Race at the Moscow Film Festival and is even interviewed by Pravda. The next destinations she goes to are Rio and Rome to work on several projects. After her trip to Europe, she tells the press that she might sell her Hollywood home and move to Europe permanently because she was bored with Hollywood life. Provine then settled down in London, where she found her partner soon after. She had an affair with an already married man. It was while making Kiss the Girls and Make Them Die in Brazil that she met the English-born director Robert Day, who was shooting Tarzan and the Great River at the time. Despite her previous beliefs about divorced men, Provine contradicted herself on many levels. Robert filed a divorce after committing adultery with Provine. A London court granted divorce to Eileen Day, the wife of director Robert Day, on the grounds of his adultery with Dorothy, who had fallen pregnant with Robert. The judge then allowed the divorce decree to be made absolute in one month instead of the usual three months. Dorothy didn't take part in the trial at all. The couple then married in 1968. Soon after her marriage, Provine retired from show business, appearing in only three TV shows in the 1970s. Although her career in films and television ended about 40 years ago, there are still viewers who cherish the memory of the perky blonde singer, dancer, and actress Dorothy Provine, who sadly passed away of emphysema aged 75. What shocked you more about this actress's interesting career? Let us know in the comments and continue watching the next video on this series.